Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today, as you can see, it's going to be Sonic CD for the Sega CD. Uh, we're going to skip the introduction and just get straight into the game. We're going to start a brand new game here. And this is the North American version. We're playing it on an actual Sega CD. Um, so what you're going to hear is the original United States soundtrack. Uh, a lot of people actually prefer the Japanese soundtrack, but I actually really dig the North American soundtrack. Uh, it's probably because this is the version I actually played back in the day. I actually, I had this game probably in 96 or 97 and played the hell out of it. I loved this game back in the day. Uh, we'll see if I still like it. <laughs> uh, uh, what's been happening with these Sonic games is I've been going back to them to Let's Play and, um, and my experiences with them have been less than stellar. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Sonic City. And it looks like I'm going to the future. So the big gimmick with Sonic CD is that you get these post signs um, over the playfield that say past or future. And when you hit them, if you get up to a certain speed without stopping, you will actually get zapped into either the past or the future. And it's uh, a really cool concept and a cool mechanic. Like here's one for the past. We could go back to the past if we want, but we're not going to. Um, and so... Basically, the purpose of it is, for one, to mix up the level design. You know, you can see the, the level is kind of the same as it was before, but objects are kind of in different places. Um, the music has changed. Uh, the theme has changed, and, and so forth. Um, what, what you can also do, though, is, aside from just, like, it mixing up the, the level structure and, and so forth, uh, if you go back into the past, there's actually some things you can destroy in the past that'll affect how the future looks. So right now, this is kind of like a dim and grim future, you know, it's, but if we go back and do some things in the past and then go to the future, um, things look nice and bright, the music changes again, and, and so forth. So it's a pretty cool little mechanic that um, isn't necessary to play by when you're playing the game, but it's, it's good for replay value. If you're the kind of person that likes to explore everything in a Sonic level, uh, the past, present, and future mechanic actually uh, really uh, enhances that. It's even more for you to explore, which is one of the great things about Sonic CD, I think. Um, one of the big complaints about Sonic CD that people have is that the level design isn't nearly as fluid as it is in, um, you know, like Sonic 1 or Sonic 2 or Sonic 3. Uh, and that's definitely true, but... Um, what I think that's really cool is because of the past, present, future mechanic, there's just so much more to do in the game. Um, and I think that's really cool and makes Sonic CD, uh, very unique compared to the, uh, the others in the series. And, uh, it's, uh, definitely a very cool game. So, uh, something I haven't mentioned yet is that you can get Chaos Emeralds in this game, or I think they might be called Time Stones or something like that. Um, oh, here's a perfect example right here. So if we destroy this thing, uh, it affects the future. And now I don't know if we can just destroy that and it affects the future, or if we need to destroy the other thing. There's, um... You'll find, uh, these generators in the past that... Oh, right there. We just got it. Huh, cool. Okay. That, um, basically show Robosonic. And this is when Robosonic actually had his, uh, had his redesign. Because in Sonic 2, he was just this big, hulking metal beast, but in this one, he's much more stylish looking. And I think we, yeah, we failed that. So, if you want to like, zap into the past or the future, you really need to uh, have a lot of space to wind up. Uh, but something I, I, I did want to want to note is if you want to go to bonus stages in this game, You've got to have 50 rings by the exit, just like in the first Sonic the Hedgehog. So, where Sonic 2, um, to get the bonus ages, you would have to go to just your checkpoint posts with 50 rings and then jump into those. Uh, in this, you've got to have 50 rings by the end, the end of the stage, just like in the very first Sonic the Hedgehog. So, in a way, getting your Chaos Emeralds or your Time Stones or whatever they're called in this one, can be a little bit trickier than it is in um, the other Sonic the Hedgehog games. Uh, the bonus stages themselves, I don't think, are that difficult. Uh, they take a little time to get used to, but once you get used to them, you should be able to just, you know, bolt through them without too much of an issue. 
Uh, on these bonus levels, you want to not touch the water. The water is evil on these bonus stages. And there's another one. Uh, so basically what you need to do is just jump into these UFOs. And uh, it basically tells you how many you have left in the top left portion of the screen. And there we go, we got a stone. <clears throat> yeah, time stones. Not chaos stones or chaos time stones. Just time stones. Now the big thing about the time stones is that uh, it affects your ending. And since we're on the uh, the third act, this is the boss act. So much like the first Sonic the Hedgehog, there's three acts per level. And um, the third act is your boss level. So we don't really need a whole lot here. We can just sort of, sort of bowl through to the end if we want. Now, if we had gotten, uh, defeated all the, the correct objects in the previous acts, uh, this third act would look nice and bright and shiny and cheery and blah 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 basically the future would have looked a whole lot better uh, the boss fights always take place in the future so what you do in the first two acts can determine you know the state of the level on your your boss act which is pretty cool again it's not necessary to you know for beating the game or anything like that but it just adds replay value like can you have the final boss act on every single world look cool and good and blah 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 like you could set a personal goal like that and i think it's it's pretty neat that uh sonic city allows you to do that so you've got the spin dash in this one um but the spin dash doesn't have like that fancy graphical uh, sprite where sonic's spinning it's just his normal running and jumping animation it's just sped up so I'm not an expert on uh, Sonic history, but from what I understand, um, Sonic CD is kind of like the, I don't, well, let me go back a step. Sonic CD and I think the North American Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I think were being developed around the same time. Uh, Sonic CD was developed in Japan while Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was developed in North America. Um, and uh, so Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was released first in North America. Um, but you can tell, like, with this game that... Um, okay, good. I didn't, I didn't actually want to teleport. That just takes extra time. Um, you can tell that this is modeled a little more after the first Sonic the Hedgehog with how levels are drawn out, with how, um, how Sonic's sprite looks and so forth. Uh, you know, his spin dash animation has uh, really no specialized animation to it. It's just your jump animation. And um, it's interesting, you know. Although what's actually kind of interesting about this one that Sonic 2 does not have is you can uh, also hold up and press jump to do another form of spin dash. I totally forgot what it was actually called. But this one right here actually originated in this game where Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Genesis did not have that. I, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so if anybody watching that's actually, that actually is an expert on Sonic history, I'm interested to know if, um, if this was supposed to be the original Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Like, I, I'm wondering if this started development first, um, because there are some things that are kind of backwards compared to the, to the North American developed Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Um, Sonic 2 has... Bigger. It almost seems like the sprites are bigger in some cases. The uh, the colors are brighter, and, and blah blah blah. The level design is a lot more fluid in Sonic 2, uh, for the most part. Um, but each game has their their pluses and minuses uh, in comparison to one another. Like, you know, Sonic CD just has a lot going on with the level design. Like the flow is not as nice, but there's arguably more to do in these levels. Um, so, but the big giveaway for me is like the, the graphical design, like it definitely looks a lot more like the first Sonic the Hedgehog in this game, which makes me wonder if this was originally being developed like right after the first Sonic the Hedgehog or something like that. Um, or maybe it, came, it literally actually started development after the actual Sonic 2 
and the Japanese studio just felt, you know, hey, uh, we'll just use uh, the assets from the first Sonic. I don't know. So, but I'm sure there are some Sonic aficionados out there that can uh, that can clarify. So we're just trying to fall down here. We got the our pinball flippers, and uh, this boss is actually. I think we actually have to use pinball flippers on this boss, which is pretty cool. So, uh, for those of you guys that might be younger, um, when the Sonic the Hedgehog series was big, pinball was also big. Pinball was the biggest it had ever been uh, in the history of, you know, uh, arcades. And basically, pinball had its biggest boom in the early 90s, starting around 91, 92, which is when Sonic the Hedgehog was a thing. And um, so Sonic the Hedgehog games incorporated pinball elements into them because Sonic is this just ball and with flippers you can just bounce that ball around. Uh, you got thumper bumpers just like in pinball and blah blah blah. And uh, so yeah, uh, probably the reason you see pinball flippers and stuff like and stuff like that is that pinball was actually popular at the time. So I don't know if that was an influence on you know, why flippers are a thing in, in a Sonic game. See, those are your thumper bumpers right there. Normally in the modern day, they're called pop bumpers, but they don't really pop in the Sonic games like real pop bumpers do on a pinball machine. So this boss is actually really simple. You just got to get to the top, if I recall correctly. And I sometimes wonder if uh, this this boss was an influence for uh, Sonic Spinball, which was also I, I think Sonic Spinball was an American developed Sonic game. Um, I think that was another one developed by uh, Sega of North America. But Sonic Spinball was actually a pretty cool game, but it did not share the same uh, level of detail and quality that you got in the actual Sonic Two. And while Sonic 2 was made in North America, I think it actually had a lot of Japanese folks working on it as well. There's a ton of Japanese names in the uh, Sonic 2 credits, but you also have some some uh, American dudes' names in that game as well, in the credits. So this is our obligatory water level. Um, Sonic 2 actually did not have a level where you were always underwater like this. Uh, it had the... Uh, the aqueduct zone or whatever whatever it was called but if you play that level right you could actually play it to where you never win underwater so and I actually think that's pretty cool because a lot of people don't like water stages uh, whereas this level kind of kind of forces you into the whole water elements ah, the music is so funky in this game <laughs> So I really like the the North American soundtrack. Um, I've heard the Japanese soundtrack, and it's you know for a lot of people the North American soundtrack sounds kind of weird, but for me the Japanese soundtrack actually sounds kind of weird. Um, and it's not that it's bad or anything. It's just I'm so used to this soundtrack, and uh, you know I had a Sega CD in the uh, the mid '90s, and I've played a lot of games on it. And I really really like the add-on. It's a really good little system, I think. Um, and so I'm used to kind of how the music sounds in uh, the North American Sega CD library. Uh, now, for those of you guys that don't know, this game did come out um, in the, uh, you know, probably around 2010 or 2011. It was ported to... Uh, it had a modern port to the Xbox 360, probably PlayStation 3, um, PC via Steam, as well as uh, smartphones. And um, it was a really neat um, game because it was like a brand new version of the game. It was the screen was stretched out, so it was widescreen. Um, but it was actually physically, the levels were physically in extended. It wasn't just upscaled and then stretched out. Um, so you had 
Sonic still had that same aspect ratio that he has in, you know, in the original console versions, which is really cool, but the levels are just wider looking, which is neat. Um, and then, um, they, they gave you the option to, to play as a variety of other Sonic characters that weren't originally in this game, like, uh, you could play as Tails. Uh, I think you, you might even be able to unlock Knuckles, I'm not sure about that. Um... And they also let you choose between the North American and Japanese soundtrack, so... Um, that's really the ultimate way to play Sonic CD. Uh, so check it out on Xbox 360 or Steam. I think it's only five bucks, so if you don't have a Sega CD, uh, you can play this game that way. Uh, this was also released on the Sonic Gems collection for the GameCube, but... Uh, that compilation is a little uncommon now, and it's the GameCube. Um, uh, yeah. So the easiest way to get this is through just that modern port on uh, modern systems, which is definitely the way to go if you really want to uh, experience this game. Me, I just played on Sega CD. <laughs> oh, that was bad. So, unlike my Sonic 2 Let's Play from a little while ago, um, I'm not really trying to get uh, the Chaos Emeralds and stuff like that. I'm just trying to get through the game. Because uh, the Sonic games are usually relatively lengthy games to Let's Play. Um, I mean, they're not super long games in their own right. But they'll take like an hour and a half for me to Let's Play. And, uh, you know, when I, when I do Let's Plays, I do them in one sitting, typically. And so it's kind of like... You know, 90 minutes sitting in the same spot for me, it's just nowadays it's kind of like, oh, I need to get up and move around, but I can't. I can't when I do these Let's Plays. <laughs> um, and so if I try to go for all the Chaos Emeralds, or in the case of this game, Time Stones, uh, it just adds extra time uh, to the, uh, the whole playthrough. All right, boss time. Now, one of the big differences between the spin dash and this version is that you can't charge it up. Like, you can't keep tapping the button. So you basically just tap it once, and you've got to let it spin up a little bit. If you do, if you try to do it right away, it doesn't work. So if you're used to Sonic the Hedgehog 2, it does feel a little bit clunkier than what you're probably used to. I just realized we haven't gotten many lives yet. But I haven't really been trying to collect a lot of rings or anything like that, so... We got an extra life for that, I guess from points. We got a hundred thousand points, and we got an extra life.
Quartz Quadrants. This is actually a pretty fun level for just trying to bolt like right through it. It's kind of laid out in a way where you, you can, if you do it just right, you can just go through it without stopping basically. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I've always dug the more rock-focused soundtrack of this version. I think Spencer Nilsson did the soundtrack for the uh, North American Sonic CD. And he did a lot of Sega CD soundtracks back in the day. Uh, I'm not sure if the guy's still doing video game music, but, uh, you know, he did a lot of stuff on Sega CD back in the day. Batman Returns was another one he did. <laughs> Come on. I'm getting lazy, I'm just like, <laughs> slamming in everything I can. Ooh, bonus stage. I wasn't even trying to do that. So I guess we're going to another bonus stage, guys. Now, one of the cool things about Sonic CD is that... Um, this was actually the first Sonic game where you could actually save your progress and um, you'd be able to try to beat the game in multiple sittings and not just one sitting. So, uh, you can actually use that to your advantage with these bonus stages. You could, uh, I'm pretty sure what you could do is save it and then try to go do a bonus stage, like save it right before a certain level. And then if you fail at the bonus stage, just reset the system, reload your save file, and uh, do it again. Which was, this was uh, the first Sonic the Hedgehog game where you could do that. So, pretty neat stuff, I think. The Sega CD had, uh, basically, a built-in internal memory, which was great. So, uh, a memory card was not uh, a requirement for the Sega CD, unlike some other systems. So... Uh, the memory cartridge was completely optional. Unless you were playing, like, one of the handful of games, uh, one of the handful of RPG games that just took up all of the memory. Um, but Sonic the Hedgehog CD uh, only takes up a few blocks of internal memory, so... Uh, so it does have save functionality, which is really cool. Uh, there's also a time attack mode in the game, uh, where you can basically... It, it times your... Um, well, your times as you play levels. And um, so it actually saves that progress too, which is really cool. So this boss right here, we don't really do anything. We just have to hold right and don't get hit, which I've already failed at already.
So you get seven lives. And we're on Wacky Workbench, okay. This is probably one of my least favorite levels in the game. It's a very vertically oriented level. I mean, pretty much every level in any Sonic game allows you to go vertical a lot, but this level really focuses on that aspect. As you can see, we just got flung up big time, so... I'm gonna just try to get through this stage as quickly as I can. Which basically means just pressing right as much as I can. Maybe I'll try to go up on this part. Oh, I thought I landed on that platform. A lot of ways to get hurt uh, on this level, unfortunately. Is there no way to go up? I'm confused. Yeah, you probably gotta go down and land on one of those platforms. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Because when you touch those, uh, checkered board platforms, when they're blinking, they fling you up. And that's what stops you on this level. Let's go back down. That's actually really cool. Um, on that boost thing I was attached at the very beginning of the stage, uh, I noticed that in this version, Sonic kind of like attaches to it, like he grabs onto it. So it's interesting to see like some of the uh, unique animations in this game that aren't in Sonic 2, and some of the unique animations in Sonic 2 that aren't in this game. It's really quite interesting, I think. Because like in Sonic 2, he literally just sits on top of it and just flings off like an idiot. Whereas in this one, he's actually got an animation for it, which is pretty cool. Alright, making good progress. I'm just trying to get through this level as fast as possible, because you can literally try to play this one all day. Alright, so this boss is kind of interesting, too.
Oh, I got crushed. I had a feeling that was going to happen. We got to go all the way back to the beginning because I didn't hit a checkpoint. <laughs> go me. All right, I want the shield. Come on, stop charging up. I guess it's always charged. Never mind. Yeah, I knew you could get crushed, and so, uh... Alright, so we should just be able to fling up, jump right into him, and then that's it. Yeah, just like that. And somehow Robotnik gets ahead. I don't know how, but he did. He magically does every single time. Alright, so this is probably the Starlight Zone, or whatever it's called. And then after that, I think... We might be at the final stage, actually. I don't know. Yeah, I remember this stage. Stardust... Oh, that's right, Stardust Speedlight. I think... S Starlight something might be in the first Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I am terrible with the names of these levels these days. Definitely not my forte. So this is one of the levels where, like, the level design is totally different from what you're probably used to in a traditional Sonic game. Because it looks like you should be able to just flow through this level, but you can't. Um, if you try, you just kind of get stuck on a wall or something like that. It's, it's weird. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I just keep doing the same thing. And it almost seems like there are these, um... Like there are these switches you can hit or something. Like these right there, almost... Yeah. It's like you flip them and uh, it changes whether... Oh, I see what's going on. Oh, you know, all the times I played this game, I had no idea that's what was happening. Okay, so basically you've got these, like, little switches, and I'm at the very beginning again. Wow. I'll try to explain when I see them again. So like, there's these little spinny things, right? And when you hit them, they spin up and down. And when they're on the foreground, it means you're on the foreground. And if they're on the background, it means you're on the background. So like, I need to hit that to go behind. And up. Yeah, it's- it's so weird.
Am I back at the beginning again? Okay, no. <laughs> Good. I'm intentionally not going to the future or the past because it just takes extra time and I don't really care that much. Okay, so now if we hit this, we can go behind. See, just like that. You know, I never knew that. I never had any idea back in the day. It's funny, like, it's not till I do a Let's Play that I finally figure it out. Because I noticed the signs were spinning, I was like, why are they spinning? Like, they're probably not spinning for no good reason. Like, they're probably there for a reason. Okay, that's interesting. So the third act of this level is actually a race with Metal Sonic, and that basically is our boss fight. Sort of. Kind of. Oh, this level design is killing me now. It's just all over the place. Alright, there we go. Whew. Glad that was over. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Oh, come on. So you basically got to do this before, or get to the end before Metal Sonic does, otherwise you die.
Oh, I keep doing it. Need some rings. <laughs> I don't think I'm fast enough. Oh, I did it. Okay, cool. And there's Amy. Alright, so where are we at now? Is this the final set of stages? It's been a, actually, it's been a... Yeah, this is the final set of stages. It's actually been a little while since I've beaten this game. So that said, the game's not as long as Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Which I have no problem with. So we got even more references to the first Sonic the Hedgehog here. Oh, come on. Basically, these spinning platforms here, those are in the first Sonic. Alright, one down. I figured that level was going to be a major pain, but maybe the second one will. And these things right here, these spinning things, they made a appearance in Sonic 2 for the Game Gear and the Master System. So one of these parts is actually going to have you turn into a, a mini, mini Sonic. There's going to be a ray that's going to shrink me, which is pretty cool.
So apparently I was on the right track. I just need to come back this way. Yeah, because look, there's a checkpoint here. <laughs> Oh, I could have avoided that. There's a bunch of one-way gates on this level that you gotta watch out for. So this beam right here is actually what turns you into a little Sonic. I was pretty sure that was on this level. The question is how do I get to it now? This level always confuses me when I get here. There's Mini Sonic. And I think we might be at the end, or close to it. Metallic Madness. There's actually some endless pits here. I don't know if it's right here or if it's another part.
All right, boss time. Let's take the easy way out. Oh, I, <laughs> we're probably gonna die. <laughs> I was being dumb. Oops, yep, we died. Thought I could get cocky and just uh, take the easy way out. I probably still can, I just... Yep, Endless Pit. I had a feeling that was going to be the case. Um, okay. <laughs> Spring me right on the spikes. That's good. Good stuff. Gotta say, the boss music in this game is kind of creepy. <laughs> Oops. Oh, that's not good. What are you doing here? <laughs> How did you make it through all those traps? <laughs> I think that's it, guys. Yeah.
So there you have it guys, that's Sonic CD for the Sega CD. Uh, the ending actually does some full motion video and then it shrinks down, you'll notice the animation frames on the full motion video are a lot smoother. Uh, it's not full screen or even a quarter of the screen. So uh, this does have an intro, an animated intro, which I skipped through, uh, but that's one of the other benefits to Sonic CD versus the cartridge Sonics is that there's some Bonuses like this with full motion video, which is pretty cool uh, And it's animated. It's not live action or anything. So it looks really good on uh, for this game. So I wish more Sega CD games did um, Animated full motion video like this uh, It just looks good so But uh, yeah, man Sonic CD. It's a it's a fun game. Uh, I definitely like it. It's good stuff. If you haven't played it, I, again, like I said, I uh, recommend checking it out on an Xbox 360 or Steam or iOS or Android, whatever you have. It's only five bucks and um, it's HD. It looks great. You get the Japanese soundtrack as well. Uh, smoother for motion video and uh, faster load times and, and so forth. It's uh, Definitely a game worth worth having and worth playing, so. Yeah, Spencer Nielsen, David Young. Apparently they call this the special edition for North America. That's funny, that's what they say in the, uh, the credits. Very interesting. Mixed at Sega Multimedia Studio. Yeah, so it looks like they had like live bands doing the, uh, the music for this game. They had all these music credits, which is interesting. Back in the day, there was a lot of that for platforms like the Sega CD, you know, live bands doing uh, the music for the games. Basically, it wasn't just all electronic, you know. But you did have uh, quite a few games, especially on like the PC Engine, where uh, it was all electronic, you know. But, uh... Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, try again, it says. Yeah, since you're dealing with time travel in this game, I guess basically what happens is everything just reverts back to where it was when you started. Um, so yeah, you do get a better ending if you get all the time stones, but uh, you still get a pretty good ending regardless. Like that animation's pretty sweet. And uh, I've always uh, liked that uh, ending theme. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys a couple things real quick while I'm here, uh, right before I wrap this up, but you can uh, actually take the game you want to continue and copy it to the the, uh, the internal memory. So basically, the file that we just played through, I can I can continue right back on that final stage if I want to, uh, which is really cool. So, but uh, you've also got time attack. And, uh, you know, I haven't done any times because I'm basically starting off with a brand new save file for this Let's Play. But you can go through each level and try to, um, you know, beat your times. You know, try to get through these levels as quickly as you can. So, it's cool stuff. You know, I, I like that, that the game uh, gives you that. Uh, so, extra replay value outside of the normal single player. Um... So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here, guys. Like I said, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy this Let's Play. Um, maybe sometime in the future, I'll get there, I'll, I'll get around to Sonic 3. Uh, so I've already done Sonic's 1, 2, and Sonic CD. Maybe I'll get around to Sonic 3 and hopefully some of the Game Gear ones as well. Uh, but none of those are on my to-do list right now. I'm gonna probably take a break from Let's Plays for just a little bit, um, or at least try to get together a game plan of what, future games I want to let's play 
Um, but I've been pretty gung-ho with Let's Plays for the last two months, so it's probably time to take a tiny bit of a break, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, Sonic CD, really, really fun stuff. Uh, so yeah. Alright guys, I'm out. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon.